Okay, so we've talked about um, organisms, food chains, niche occupation, all that. So in general, the whole thing leads to a loss of biodiversity. Okay, so what is biodiversity? A quick video to show you what this is. Our planet's diverse, thriving ecosystems may seem like permanent fixtures, but they're actually vulnerable to collapse. Jungles can become deserts, and reefs can become lifeless rocks, even without cataclysmic events like volcanoes and asteroids. What makes one ecosystem strong and another weak in the face of change? The answer, to a large extent, is biodiversity. Biodiversity is built out of three intertwined features, ecosystem diversity, species diversity, and genetic diversity. The more intertwining there is between these features, the denser and more resilient the weave becomes. Take the Amazon rainforest, one of the most biodiverse regions on Earth due to its complex ecosystems, huge mix of species, and the genetic variety within those species. Here are tangled liana vines, which crawl up from the forest floor to the canopy, intertwining with treetops and growing thick wooded stems that support these towering trees. Helped along by the vines, trees provide the seeds, fruits, and leaves to herbivores such as the tapir and the agouti, which disperse their seeds throughout the forest so they can grow. Leftovers are consumed by the millions of insects that decompose and recycle nutrients to create rich soil. The rainforest is a huge system filled with many smaller systems like this, each packed with interconnected species. Every link provides stability to the next, strengthening biodiversity's weave. That weave is further reinforced by the genetic diversity within individual species, which allows them to cope with changes. Species that lack genetic diversity due to isolation or low population numbers are much more vulnerable to fluctuations caused by climate change, disease, or habitat fragmentation. Whenever a species disappears because of its weakened gene pool, a knot is untied and parts of the net disintegrate. So, what if we were to remove one species from the rainforest? Would the system fall apart? Probably not. The volume of species, their genetic diversity, and the complexity of the ecosystems form such rich biodiversity in this forest that one species gap in the weave won't cause it to unravel. The forest can stay resilient and recover from change. But that's not true in every case. In some environments, taking away just one important component can undermine the entire system. Take coral reefs, for instance. Many organisms in a reef are dependent on the coral. It provides key microhabitats, shelter, and breeding grounds for thousands of species of fish, crustaceans, and mollusks. Corals also form interdependent relationships with fungi and bacteria. The coral itself is a loom that allows the tangled net of biodiversity to be woven. That makes coral a keystone organism, one that many others depend on for their survival. So what happens when destructive fishing practices, pollution and ocean acidification weaken coral or even kill it altogether? Exactly what you might think. The loss of this keystone species leaves its dependence at a loss too, threatening the entire fabric of the reef. Ecosystem, species, and genetic diversity together form the complex tangled weave of biodiversity that is vital for the survival of organisms on Earth. We humans are woven into this biodiversity too. When just a few strands are lost, our own well-being is threatened. Cut too many links and we risk unraveling it all. What the future brings is unpredictable, but biodiversity can give us an insurance policy, Earth's own safety net, to safeguard our survival. Okay, so you heard that, but the question now is, you heard that there's a keystone species, right? The question now is, are humans a keystone, keystone species, or are we actually not that important? Okay, I'll leave that to the end, okay? The impact of loss of diversity in the tropics, um, I, want, I would like to talk a little bit about agriculture and biodiversity, because ultimately, of course, I'm not covering the part about global food supply, but it's still, uh, there is still this understanding of it, because here, we are talking about um, still human needs in a sense, in terms of how much we need uh, because of the biodiversity. We, we cannot rely on, on just uh, one or two species. We need we need a lot more, right? Because basically our human society uh, works um, on, on, on having a diversified uh, 
range of foods and also diversity by range of in this case of medicine also. Alright, so we will look at that from the aspect. So biodiversity would provide the safety net uh, for this whole range of things that we need. Okay. So uh, in general, uh, if you have to feed an ever-growing population, which is actually what it is right now, uh, we need to find new ways to ensure that these two areas, right, agriculture and biodiversity, can can integrate together nicely in a balanced way. Because a lot of times, uh, agriculture is determined by what the human demands are. If everybody wants to eat durian, then we'll just change everything to growing durian. If everybody wants to eat this, then uh, we are not actually encouraging biodiversity in that way, if you understand what I'm saying, okay? Okay, so how can we keep up the change now? Um, the idea here is, of course, climate change is going to threaten the entire uh, globe's biodiversity. Uh, we need to understand the critical question as to can the species undergo any shifts of sufficient speed and magnitude to persist. So, in terms of how it's going to affect the organisms, basically, especially in terms of the niche uh, shifting, we need to understand the speed and the magnitude of change, whether they can do it or not. And one of the research done on 266 uh, species or groups that's been identified is that their change on uh, the adaptability is much slower than what uh, slower than what the climate can can uh, can allow them to to take. You know, in terms of how fast the climate change it means, they are not able to keep up. So we are actually not very um, optimistic about how the whole thing is. Okay, at this point in time. 